As we're creating topo solids, you don't always have to create them from scratch. There are a lot of good sources of data that we can use to create our topo solids. So let's take a look at a workflow that allows you to import some data as a CAD file. Now there are many different tools that are available to get the CAD data for terrain, but one of the ones that I like to use is SketchUp. It's just one of the many tools that's available that will let you pull in terrain data and then ultimately export it as a CAD file that Revit can in turn convert to a topo solid. So let's take a look at what that workflow looks like. I'm going to, over in SketchUp, do something called adding a location, a geolocation to a model. And I can go through and choose one. For example, if I choose, oh, let me go ahead and we'll put in Stanford University. Let's sort of see what we can come up with. There's the whole university right now. Super. I want that. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit because we can't go ahead and grab the entire space. Rather than being the campus, the campus itself, I'm going to start heading towards the hills behind the campus or the dish, as many of you know it. Let's go ahead and just select a region. And what I'm going to do is just choose some portion thereof. Maybe I'll expand that window so it's a little clearer to see what I'm doing. So I'm just up near the loop around the dish. Super. I'll choose that spot right there. Great. I'm going to go through and bring in some data. It looks like we have a couple of different providers here. Looks like I have too many tiles there. That's actually just a little bit too much space. So I can make it bring that down a little bit. I can, it looks like it'll import this. So let me import that data. And this will bring it into SketchUp, the first step of our process. So SketchUp is just one of many tools for doing these. I use well, several different tools for doing this and you can kind of uh, just kind of choose whatever one you like. Now, so far that's looking awfully flat right now, so that's not very interesting for what we want. What I want to think though about is showing the terrain itself. So let's see if I can kind of pop it up a little bit. And now you'll see that that's actually data, satellite data, that's kind of showing the kind of little hills and valleys. And that's what I want to be using. So super, I got my first step done. Next thing I want to do is actually think about exporting this data in a format that Revit can use. So to do that, what I'm going to do is say File and Export. I'm going to export a 3D model. Okay, and I'm going to ultimately bring this out as a DWG file. Okay, now depending upon how you're set up in SketchUp, just as one of the examples, you know, that may or may not be available to you as an option. If you need help, kind of creating a DWG file. The TAs and I can do that for you because most of us have SketchUp with the Pro version that has that feature available to it. So we can help you create that. But again, there are many other tools. So don't worry if that's not available to you right away. There's a lot of ways we can kind of create this sort of file for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that away. We're exporting the 3D model. The DWG file has been created. So now I can go ahead and bring it up in Revit instead. Okay, let's see if I can switch over to Revit. Okay, we are back over to Revit. What I'm going to do is just open up a brand new project. And again, I'll just use the default template. Super. Okay, so we're starting from scratch again. What I'm going to do now is actually just bring in that CAD file. So to do that, I can say insert, and I can either link to that CAD or actually import the CAD file. I'm going to link to it so that it's not actually in my Revit project. It's a little bit separate. That way I don't have to worry about carrying around the weight. You'll see there's the SketchUp terrain example. There's the DWG file. Let me just go ahead and open it and we'll see what we get. I'll go to 3D, and you'll see, well, it's kind of an interesting object. It's actually triangulated everything for us, okay? But that's going to be close enough for the accuracy we need for the model that we're going to create. So that's a pretty good start. There's also a big flat plane. That's going to be, oh, the, uh, the image that was kind of considered to be flat, whereas this kind of undulating surface is the one we want to be working with. 
So you might ask, well, how do we go through and convert that into these topo solids instead? And it's actually a pretty simple process. If we go to Massing Insight and we choose the topo solid tool again, we can say create from import and we have a choice of either from a CAD file or a CSV file. So CAD files have all the point data kind of loaded in a nice 3D format that you can see. CSV files are often coming from surveyors where it's just all the XYZ data in a big tabular format, but we could use that too. So I'm going to choose Create from CAD. Okay, and it's going to ask us to select a 3D import symbol to create a topo solid. So I'm going to grab that one. Now, it's going to wonder of all the different things that it found in that DWG file, what are the ones that actually contain the data we're going to use? And the zero layer from SketchUp is just the drawing layer. We don't need that one. The snapshot is the kind of imagery. We don't need that one. It's all really stored in that location terrain file or layer. So let's go ahead and choose that. And just like that, it's created for us a topo solid. Now, it's a little hard to see the topo solid because that DWG file is still hanging around too. So what I can do is either choose that and I can delete it. I can hide it if I want to, really whatever I want. Let me just go ahead and hide it right now. Okay, and now you'll see there is the actual surface. So super that is now available for us to use and we can start using all the same techniques we can kind of put a void on there to cut out some space to place our building or we can just start modeling building elements just right on top just so you know there's a lot of different ways we can get this data so uh yeah you have options for how you can do that without having to create everything from scratch